I have you loud and clear, Governor. It's a pleasure to talk with you today. Thank you, Dr. Epps. We are thrilled to be talking to you. We have been so looking forward to this. We have so many questions for you, starting with, what's it like? We've asked students all over the state of New York to send in questions, and they all want to know, what does it feel like? Well, I can tell you that um, it's amazing being here now. Um, looking at the earth from this perspective has been a pure joy and it's a mind blowing experience, experience that you can only get coming to the space station or flying to space. So it's a, it's a great adventure. One of the um, things that I've, I've wanted to do for a long time. So it's amazing. You prepared so long, such a long part of your life for this. Uh, what inspired you to want to be an astronaut in the first place? Well, initially, I didn't want to become an astronaut. I just wanted to become an um, aerospace engineer. I never dreamed that they would select me to be an astronaut, so I didn't set my sights on becoming an astronaut. Um, you know, when I was a kid, about nine years old, my older brother came home from college, and he looked at my grades and my twin sister's grades and said, well, you know, you guys can become astronauts or maybe even aerospace engineers. And my mind back then thought, they'll never select me to be an astronaut, but I can become an aerospace engineer. So that's what I focused on rather than be focusing on becoming an astronaut. So, <laughs> but I never dreamed I'd be here. But you worked very hard and prepared for this. And what an inspiration to particularly young girls uh, from a place like Syracuse. I went to college in Syracuse. I know it well, it's a great community, but uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy to be one of the smartest kids with your sister in a school and trying to figure out what the path looks like. So uh, we are so proud of you. And uh, we put out questions to students all over the state of New York. But the most significant thing right now is that you'll be one of the few group of astronauts to ever have seen a total eclipse of the sun from space, one of the few Americans. So the questions from the kids are, how does that feel? What is that going to be like? I have a specific question uh, from a student uh, from Penfield. Sarah from Penfield says, can you see the total eclipse forming in space? Well, what we can see mainly is the shadow of the eclipse over the earth as it passes through. So we won't be able to look directly at the sun and see the eclipse that way, but what we'll see and we're looking for is to see the shadow as it crosses over the earth. What an incredible vantage point. Here on earth, we're all gonna be wearing glasses. We handed out uh, these protective glasses all over New York, which we're wondering, do you need to wear glasses when you're up in space? That's what they're asking. We do have glasses to wear uh, while we're up here, um, but we're going to be focused on taking pictures of the shadow as it goes over the earth, and we'll, we'll have um, a couple of um, discussion topics as well as, as the event approaches. So looking at the eclipse from this vantage point, you know, it seems like it should be the same thing as looking at it on earth, but looking at it from this vantage point and taking photos may help give astrophysicists and astronomers different, a different perspective on it, and we may learn some things out of it. Oh, that's exciting. And here on Earth, we're looking forward to it going all the way across the state of New York, uh, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, up to the Adirondacks. So the uh, rest of the world is going to be watching New York State as well. So you'll be watching from a different vantage point. One of our questions from Katie in Binghamton was, can you literally see New York or even Syracuse from space? Can you tell where it is when you're looking out? She's asking if we can see New York. Yes, we can see New York. We've got um, a telephoto lens. We can look at some areas. Um, like um, there's been many great photos of the Finger Lakes from the space station. And just looking at the different um, geog um, geology of New York, it's, a, it's an amazing view. You can see Long Island clearly. You can see all parts of New York from this vantage point. Maybe you can send us some special pictures for New York State that we can post here in the Capitol. So I'd love to continue featuring that. So uh, maybe we, we have a line to that. Uh, we also have a question about you know, what it's like for you as a woman of color to be in that position and what that message sends to other young women who may not think they have the ch same chance that you had or may not have a brother who came back and, and put the ideas in their head. What do you say to them and how do you hope that your experience is going to help 
drive more young women, especially in the, the science and the technology and the math fields where there's a lot of great careers, right? Yeah, there's um, there's so many great things um, that I want to share just because I realize over my career how many young ladies don't really believe that this is something for them or is something that they can do. They don't think they have the right stuff to become an astronaut, but I'm here to tell them that we all do. And it all depends on the work and time and effort that you put in as well as, as the desire. If you have a passion for space, if you, um, if it's your goal and your dream, but you don't have parents that were scientists or engineers, um, but you have a desire to do that, I encourage them to stay the course, to do the hard things. Everything is hard until you learn it. So learn the hard things and pursue your dreams. Don't back down no matter what. Um, pursue your dreams with all your passion and you never know where you'll end up. You may end up becoming an astronaut. You may not, but the big thing is that you will go way far, well, you'll go much further than if you had never had that dream to go that far. So I say dream big, pursue your goals and your passions with all your might. There's always time to have fun as well, so I don't uh, want to give the impression that everything is all work, but there's a lot of fun, especially up here in space as well. Well, Dr. Evans, tell us about what did you do for fun up in space? Well, you know, as a crew up here, we um, we do have dinner together and we bond and we have lots of great talks. We watch movies together. Um, we even play a few games. We may have um, just some minor games that we may play. But, you know, being with friends is, um, you know, we can always make any event fun. <laughs> looking out Are the window is another thing. Um, looking at, out of the cupola. Are you able to watch any women's basketball from there? We had a big game in Albany a couple days ago. Uh, Iowa, Caitlin Clark, LSU. So the whole world was watching Albany for a brief time and they weren't looking up and looking for you. Are you able to watch any sports up there from America? Well, we, we, we don't really watch much of the sports that are going on right now, but we, we have movies and different things that we can watch. We're actually pretty busy at this time, so watching movies um, is kind of like on the back burner for a little bit, but we had a vehicle visit we had from a SpaceX 30 cargo vehicle visit, and we've been unloading that and doing some of the experiments so that we can pack up the um, vehicle and send it back to Earth. So, you know, we're busy a lot. That's why when we get together to have dinners together, um, that's our fun time. You know, evenings are around the um, table in our node one is where we end up um, chatting and having a little fun. So what are some of the other experience, experience, experience that you're working on? Are you, uh, do you have something exciting you're working on to send back? You have something exciting you're working on to send back? Well, a lot of the experiments, we're the hands and the eyes of the researchers back on Earth. So we have these great experiments, for example, the thigh cuff experiment. What the thigh cuff does is it applies pressure to your thighs to help the, regulate the pressure that, is, um, that you get in your body when you go to space. Because there's no gravity, you get a fluid shift in your body up and it can cause problems, you know, like SANS. This is the space um, associated neuroocular syndrome, where you have more pressure on the back, on your eyes, and it could create vision um, changes. So one of the research experiments we're looking at is how does the, the thigh cuffs that we wear to change the pressure to reduce the fluid shift, how does that affect um, vision? How can we use those for future space flights to help new people fly to space and and um, have less issues with the pr um, fluid shift. You know, we're also looking at something called H-Bond, where this is looking at neural inflammation and different um, drug tests that we can do in space and compare the results in space to the ones that are going on on the ground. And maybe it'll help us develop new drug therapy for neural inflammation, different things like that. So. We're doing all kinds of different things. We're also looking at different materials and how they burn in space. You know, we're working on something called the electrostatic levitation furnace. Um, so we've got a lot of cool things that we're working on to help life back on Earth as well as in space. That's exciting. I was also curious to know actually what it was like and what you were feeling when you took off to head up there. I mean, there had to be a lot of you know, just energy and, and, and adrenaline rush. And what did, what did it feel like? Describe it for us. 
Well, I have to tell you, it was surreal. But um, if had you been in the um, vehicle with the four of us, you would have heard four people scream like we were on an amusement park ride. It was amazing, and it was very surreal. Um, it was a very smooth ride um, as we increased speed. Um, the, when we lost, um, when we um, the booster would shut off. That's when you would feel a change in G's, and it was just, it's like a big roller coaster ride. It was amazing. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, you know, um, just feeling great during the launch and just amazed and looking at the earth from, oh gosh, so many miles up. Right now we're approximately 260 miles above the earth's surface, but as we rose, it's just amazing to see the earth. And I know that's a word I keep using, um, amazing, amazing. It's hard to describe um, the view from here and the things that happen as you're launching and the changes in your body and the knowledge that you're now untethered from the earth is just, it's, it's, it's one of those things breathtaking and mind blowing. And it's, it's, um, it takes time to get your brain wrapped around that. But every day that I look out the window, it's um, out the um, cupola windows it's amazing to see the earth from this vantage point. Oh, I can imagine. That's extraordinary. And also all the preparation you had to do to get to this point. What was some of the training like in uh, dealing with weightlessness? Is that something that you prepare for when you're getting ready and then so it doesn't feel as strange or does it still feel strange when it actually happens? Well, one of the cool things is that back in Houston, we have a mock-up of the space station, of the modules that are on the U.S. side and the Russian side. And the familiarity that we had when we came through the hatch was, um, <laughs> was amazing because the mock-ups are really good in Houston. But, you know, that's one of the places that we train in Houston. We do all of our emergency procedures there. We um, go through um, simulations of emergency procedures, routine ops um, scenarios. So that's part of the training. But we also do like a lot of analog missions. Like I've been, uh, lived in a cave. <laughs> I've lived underwater. I've uh, done all these different um, Knowles trips. Knowles is a national outdoor leadership school. Um, so hardcore camping for you. And so all of the analog missions that we do, as well as all the training that we do back in Houston, the T-38 jet flying that we do, we do robotics, we did spacewalk training. So there's a lot of training that we do and that I've gone through over the past 15 years to get to this point. Well, it's an extraordinary story. We're so proud of you. Uh, we're going to have to wrap in a minute because I know you have a lot more work to do while you're there. But just one last quick question. All of our students who send in questions want to know what microgravity is all about. Are there any demonstrations you can show us before we say goodbye? Well, I can show you a few things, but um, I'll try not to hit anything. But, you know, floating is like, you know, I was standing there straight because I had my feet under a, uh, under a uh, rail. But you can do all kind of things. <laughs> and end up in weird places, so. Did you ever hit your head when you do that? <laughs> well, you can, because as you can see, this is a laboratory and there's all kind of lab equipment okay. here. So, you know, we can do some <laughs> weird space tricks, but oh. the, the oh, mic there. float around, <laughs> we do a couple of different things. Oh, that's amazing. We're so excited to have a chance to get together. Can't wait to see you back on Earth. <laughs> Uh, come see us in Albany, and uh, we'd love to honor you and recognize you and uh, just continue the safe journey and enjoy watching that eclipse on Monday, April 8th, because we'll all be watching as well and thinking about you, Dr. Epps. So thanks for a great conversation. Well, thank you, Governor Hochul. I really appreciate you taking your time to have a chat with me and, and ask the questions that the students have. So thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Godspeed. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event.